policeman drive around in my car. I'm gonna be a singer and a rock and roll star. I wanna be a doctor, that'd be cool. I wanna be in TV like Steve Poole. When I grow up, I wanna have some fun. Work real hard and get my job done. Take a look around the world and see just what I wanna be. I wanna be an engineer and drive a train. I wanna be a scientist and use my brain. Drive a truck on the open road, wheels rolling to deliver my load. I want to be a farmer and milk a cow, grow some crops and ride my plow. I want to play baseball cause I love to pitch. I just know I want to be rich. When I grow up, I want to have some fun, work real hard and get my job done. Take a look around the world and see just what I want to be. I want to drive a cat and work in the dirt. I want to be a nurse and help folks that are hurt. I want to be a pilot high in the sky in a jet plane I'm gonna fly. I want to be an astronaut and fly to Mars. I want to be an astronomer and study the stars. I want to fix cars when they get a dent. Heck, I want to be the president. When I grow up, I want to have some fun, work real hard. Get my job done, take a look around the world and see just what I want to be. When I grow up, I want to have some fun, work real hard and get my job done. Take a look around the world and see just what I want to be, just what I want to be. I'm Steve Poole. You know, model trains can be an awful lot of fun, but if you've ever thought about being a real train engineer when you grow up, well, you've come to the right place because we have a lot of kids here who are interested in the same thing. Say hi, kids. Hi. Okay, let's get started. Now, if you want to learn about being a real train engineer, the first thing you have to do is watch this. For nearly 200 years, trains have been on the job. They're everywhere, in every state and every country in the world. Without them, our lives would be a lot different. Trains carry 40% of everything we need to build things or buy things or even travel from one place to another.
Lots of people want to be train engineers or conductors. It's easy to understand why. Trains are big and fast and look like a lot of fun. But can anybody do it? Yes, you can. Lots of people who work on trains got interested as kids. I used to play with uh, model American Flyer train sets when I was a little boy. Is that where you think you got kind of the bug for this? Or? I don't, th when I was, we went to uh, our school we used to uh, go to, we would uh, drive by the roundhouse every day. And I always wanted, as I was a kid, to go into the roundhouse, never did. And kind of forgot about it as I got older. And then after I got out of school, some of my friends worked on the railroad, and I started bugging them, and they finally hired me to work here. I, I really enjoyed uh, the scenery, the freedom. Uh, every trip is different. No matter what train you're on, it's always a, something to be different about. You'll see something different, or uh, the train will handle different, different loads, different empties. Uh, travel. Travel's great. I've missed a few birthdays, but try to make up for it when I get back in town. In order to do what Floyd and Neil do, it takes a lot of training and desire. Oh, I think you'd have to almost enjoy enjoy the the type of job of it that it is. You, you need you need to have some schooling, and to become an engineer, to become an engineer and a conductor. Now they send you back to uh, school back east, and uh, it's quite an intense course. Three weeks, four weeks, and uh, when they come out, they got, a, they got an idea how, how it works out here, and the rest of it's learned from the seat of your pants. The engineer drives the train, while the conductor has other duties. Well, the conductor is sort of like the captain of the ship. You're in charge of the train. When it leaves, take care of the passengers. The conductor actually tells the engineer when the train is supposed to depart, how fast it can go, whether there's any speed restrictions on the track. If you're out on a regular railroad, the conductor would be in charge of picking up, setting out cars if it was a freight train. And of course, you also have to be familiar with the timetable, what time you're supposed to arrive, whether you're supposed to go into a siding for another train or anything. Pretty much you control where the train goes, how fast, and the entire operation of the train. We know a little bit about trains. Let's see what else we can find out. Anybody have any questions? Yes. What kind of trains are there? Well, that's certainly a good question. Here's the answer. The very first trains were steam powered. That was back in the 1800s. Steam trains helped to build America by providing a link between the East Coast and the West Coast. That way people and freight could move much faster than by covered wagon. Today, there aren't many steam engines left. Those that are being used are around because people want to preserve what it was like in the early days of railroading. And if you go see one of these in a museum, you know, you look at it, oh, it's, it's nice, looks pretty. But when you see one operating, it's completely different. You got the fire in it, you got the steam coming out, the whistle blows, you got the chug coming out the stack. It doesn't. It's a whole different story that you can't get just looking at it sitting still in a museum. It, it doesn't explain it all. After steam engines, diesel-electric trains took over. That was back in the 1930s. A diesel-electric train was faster, more reliable, and could haul even bigger loads. A lot of people think it's the diesel engine that actually turns the wheels, but the diesel engines just turn a generator. And then the generator produces electricity to the wheels, and that's where they get their traction. And they're actually called traction motors. So the big, the big diesel engine turns a generator, and turn that generator puts electricity down to the traction motors, and then that's what runs the wheels and gives the power to the train. Modern trains are still run by diesel-electric power. Only the engines are even bigger and stronger, and they carry lots of fuel. Well, let's see, I think it'll carry 2,000 gallons on these particular units. Some of the newer ones, the uh, SD60s and 70s, uh, three and 4,000 gallon tanks. I've heard that uh, idling 
the bigger units will take eight gallons a minute just to idle, just to rumble. When you see a train from a distance, you really don't think of them as being all that big, but once you're up close, you can see how far you have to climb just to get up to the cab. And not just the locomotives are big, so are the cars. Trains today pull an incredible variety of cars in all shapes, sizes, and colors. You name it, there's probably a railroad car that will carry it. How do trains work? Steam engines work in some ways just like a big tea kettle. They heat up water. It's a great big fire in here. And this is all this black thing that you see is a boiler full of water. And the steam is all in the boiler, fires down on the bottom there, and it curls up around, and the, this thing looks like it's solid, but it's full of little round tubes, called boiler tubes. And the fire actually starts there, goes the whole way through these tubes, and comes out the smokestack. And that fire heats up water, which is, starts out in the tank back there, you put it in the boil water, and you boil the water, and that creates the steam to propel the locomotive. The second dome is called the steam dome. That's where they collect the steam to run the locomotive. It starts out at the very top of the boiler so it's the driest steam possible. Higher up means the steam is hot and is dry. Collected from the throttle, comes down into here, and this is the piston valve here, controls where the steam is let in, and this is the piston itself and bring the steam down from there into the piston, which is what makes the wheels go, of course. And then when it's done, it goes out through the smokestack. Once a steam train is underway, it looks and sounds like nothing else. That's why a lot of people love them, even though they are getting pretty old.
This is what it looks like inside the engine of a diesel electric train. As Neil told us, they're different. They have big engines which power an electric generator, which in turn supplies power for electric motors on the wheels. Floyd Johnson showed me around his diesel electric train. This is the uh, cow catcher. Anything that's on the rail or close to the rail, before it gets caught up underneath the locomotive and the train, it'll push it aside. It's approximately four inches off the rail, so you can, uh, anything that's uh, larger than that, it, it'll push it off to the side. This is the cut lever that you can uh, disconnect the train, locomotive so from the we, train. When we pull the cars apart. Exactly uh, what he did. So one, one person, one person can do this? Yes, oh yes. You lift up, you lift and pull towards you which will throw up this lock block and it'll open the knuckle, pull apart. That's where the brakeman used to ride years ago. They'd stand out here and, you know. So what is all this under here? Tell me about that. Well, this here is actually the speedometer, speedometer cable. This is what they call the journal. This is where the bearings are that allow the wheel to turn freely with, a, with plenty of grease in there. This is a brake piston. When this is sticking out, that means the brakes are applied, which means they're up against the wheel. If I was to release this, the brake shoes would come away from the wheel. This is leaf springs that help support the weight of the locomotive. There's a set of these on each end of it. Uh, kind of disperses the weight. The heaviest part of the locomotive is these traction motors that are inside of each journal on the wheel. They're great big uh, generators themselves that generate the power to, uh, to move the train. It's really uh, quite... Uh... This is our way into the cab the locomotive. It steps here, grab each wheel and go up. It's, uh, same thing on this side, just another set of wheels. Exactly, yeah. No speedometer. This is the sand tube I explained to you earlier. It'll uh, put sand in small increments right in front of the wheel so they won't be slippy when you, uh, when you need sand, like a wet rail or uh, when you travel up a hill. Fuel tanks right over here. This great big monster here. There's a gauge that you can gauge how much fuel you have left. If you, uh, if you run out, then it's, it's a big problem getting a truck to you. So you always want to check that before each trip. This is the filler nozzle. You take this off and that's how you fill a, the uh, fuel tank. Oh, here's the, the air lines to go between each locomotive. Sand, independent, air, uh, actuating line, and the main reservoir. This is the actual brake pipe, the big one in here, the big hose. In this instance, uh, the two brake pipe hoses are too short, so they put an extra, what they call a shorty in there between the two of them. What's it like to drive a train? If you get to be a train engineer on a rig like this one, you'll be in command of 1,750 horsepower. Now, in order to keep all that under control, you really have to know what you're doing. So we're going to get right up in there in the cab and show you what a train engineer really does. The first thing we had to do was back up the train to get on the right track to go forward again. Floyd, the engineer, worked the controls, while Neil, the conductor, did the other jobs. Neil will wind me into a different track, the conductor. He'll send me one way. So basically, he steers, but I drive. So if we're going to change direction, he changes direction, and then I take it from there. This is the uh, locomo locomotive brakes set up. This will stop the train. This will stop the locomotive. Or you can use them both together to come to a nice bunch stop. This is the throttle. Allows the engine to rev up and deliver more amps to the uh, traction motors notch up or notch back, it'll control your speed to some degree. This is the reverser, uh, forward or reverse, like, like a car would have. This is the transition lever, which they do not use anymore. It's, you put it in run one and it'll, uh, it will run the train. This is a little uh, ditch light that uh, when you blow the whistle, it'll oscillate just to get driver's attention or pedestrian's attention that there is a train coming in, in case they didn't hear the whistle. This, of course, is the old trusty radio. That's how I communicate with the conductor or the train people uh, on the train. Trains are constantly being taken apart and put back together so that they can go to a new location. That happens in a switching yard. There can be hundreds of cars, and you need a computer and lots of teamwork to keep track of things. The conductor and or brakeman will tell me, OK, you can shove the train in so far. If I don't hear from him within uh, half of that distance, I stop the train. You can't just uh, keep shoving, but he told me to shove this far. Something could have happened to him, falling down, 
radio break. Uh, there's a lot of things that could happen. As the train started forward, I got to blow the whistle. Is this the uh, whistle? Try once. Go ahead. This is the part I always wanted to do. <laughs> You don't need me anymore. I'll go ahead and get up. No, 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 don't go there. <laughs> it was fun. But then things get busy, and you really have to pay attention. There's always something. Kids along the track, animals, a crossing uh, that's not working right. Uh, you just have to be focused. There's, you can't be goofing off. <laughs> How fast does a train go? How fast a train goes depends on what it was designed to do, but they can all really move out if they have to. Well, theoretically, with a steam locomotive, there is no top speed. As much steam as you can supply to it, it'll keep going faster and faster. But what'll happen is the rods here, aren't everything is not perfectly in balance, so once you get above a certain speed, starts vibrating and eventually parts will start flying off of it and beat itself to death. Kind of like an automobile engine, once you go over a certain RPM it will start coming apart. There's a practical rule of thumb, you measure the diameter of the wheels in inches and that gives you the top speed of the locomotive. This one here is about 44 inches, so 44 miles an hour is the top speed. Probably 35 would be a good reasonable speed that it could run all day in good condition. This locomotive here this thing was built in 1953, I believe. It could go probably 80, 80 miles an hour. Pretty fast, but the track we travel on is no more than 10 miles and at times 25 miles an hour. But uh, yeah, they can go 90 miles an hour, even faster than that. In Europe, they have trains that travel a couple hundred miles an hour. The train's usual speed depends on the conditions of the track, the weather, and the rules. You see, safety is the number one concern of railroaders. There is always danger of anything that's moving that kind of speed uh, and, and so heavy. Um, equipment failure, that's always, a, that's real scary for us. Uh, break a wheel or a track's being broken, uh, kids playing on the tracks, um, cars, automobiles, uh, all those sort of things enter into our daily every day when we're traveling on the, on the rails. And any time, if something doesn't go right, we could be in trouble. No matter what the speed, you still have to stop. In the old days, brakemen had to ride on top of the cars to stop them. It was dangerous work and a lot of people got hurt. Today, trains have air brakes. If we want to stop the train, he'll apply air and it all works on air. So we have air brakes on the train. He, if we want to slow down, he'll add a little air to the system and it'll push out the pistons on the on the brakes and slow the train down. You also have to study all the information about the other activities that may be scheduled for the tracks that day. We got a set of orders every morning that uh, track warrants and orders that tell us uh, we're the only train out here in this particular instance. This gives us our authority. We can work between West Yard Limits, Woodenville, and station sign Scopa on the main track. This is today's date. That's the station where we received our orders at. That's our engine, WCRC 100. There's the, the uh, dispatcher's OK and the dispatcher's initials. Yes. You get a lot of information before you go out on what? Before we leave, we have to have one of these, yes. But mainly, working on a train is fascinating, always a challenge, and fun. Oh, it's a lot of fun. Just about everybody that's here during the steam train operation, uh, some of us are a paid crew, but all of us are here because we love steam trains and love railroading. I think the uh, friendship with the people I work with out here, um, and, and we have to become good friends, is because we spend hours and hours together. It's not unusual to spend 12 hours a day on a locomotive, so you've got to like you got to like the people you're with and, and the job you're doing. So it's a good job. It's a real good job. You uh, do a lot of things, see a lot of people, travel, 
Every trip is different. It's not like going to the same office every day. It's nice. Variety. I like the variety. It's great. Well, I think we've seen that being a train engineer can be both fun and challenging. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah! Okay, hey, listen, one other thing. Remember, never go near a train without your parents or a trusted adult. Safety first. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. And remember, you can be anything you want to be. So long. Bye. Bye.